Welcome to the Collecting Keys Friday Focus. What is going on, guys? Welcome to this edition of the Collecting Keys Friday Focus. Friday Focus number 54, which is outrageous to me that we've been doing this for over a year. And, uh, you know, we're still talking about random stuff that seems to be coming to our heads from time to time. You know, sometimes it's things we think about. Sometimes it's questions from other people. So if you do have any things that you would like us to discuss on these Friday Focus episodes, please send me a DM on Instagram at Mike underscore invest. And I would love to hear about the topic that you would like us to speak about. That way we can dive into it and give you the answers that you seek. But today I am going to talk about something that is hot on my mind. And that is what exactly is going to happen to real estate in 2023. So if this is your first time here, my name is Mike DeHaan. I'm one of the main hosts of Collecting Keys. And you will hear me on all the other episodes as well. But uh, if this is your absolutely first one, welcome. We're happy to have you. So what is going to happen with real estate for the remainder of the year? This is kind of something that I've been thinking about a lot primarily, well, obviously because I'm in real estate, but also because in the news, there's not a lot of talk right now. Basically, all the doom and gloom sort of stuff stopped getting clicks, right? People stopped clicking on the interest rate articles and sort of things. And since the news media, right, is in the sort of spot where they're trying to make money off of your clicks, they decided not to talk about that anymore because nobody's been clicking. So as a result, it is kind of radio silence. And that's okay. There was nothing wrong with that. I just think that it leaves us open to do our own analysis over what's going to happen in the real estate market both in the retail side and from the investor side. So these are my thoughts. These are based off of purely my own opinions and the kind of habits that I see within the real estate community. They are not necessarily based on absolute facts or like some insider knowledge or anything that I have talking to other people, but just what I know, kind of how real estate works and how other investors tend to act um, and kind of how the real estate market tends to act after doing this for about five years. This is what I think is going to happen for the rest of the year with the housing market. So first off, I do not think we will see any sort of a real estate crash. That was all the hype for the last year and a bit. We saw a little bit of a dip in several markets, but nothing got too crazy. And I do not think that we will see a giant crash of any kind because, you know, the people that bought with low rates over the past couple of years, they're not going to give up their stable lifestyle and look to move down in the quality of life that they have or move out into a lower quality home that costs the same price as the one that they bought for a ton of money a year or so ago and had a nice low monthly payment because of interest rates. And also too, a lot of people are not going to be buying because honestly, they can't really afford stuff right now. Just the way the interest rates are, the way taxes have gone up, the way insurance companies are increasing, the amount of money the insurance company charges you on a monthly basis across the US for different things like crazy weather and sort of stuff. The affordability is a problem. So as a result, people aren't gonna be selling, people aren't gonna be buying, house prices are ultimately going to be flat kind of across the board. That being said, I do still think that starter homes will continue to sell fast because that is where a lot of the demand is. That is where a lot of the affordability is. I also think that more expensive homes will be okay. You know, if you're in like the multi-million dollar home sort of position, people that can afford stuff like that, they're not really going to care about an extra $500, $600 of their monthly payment. They're already rich. If they like the house, they're going to buy it. And that's going to matter more to them than the affordability. The middle homes are always where it's going to be tough, right? So the kind of neighborhoods where people traditionally have sold like the starter homes and moved up to. So like where I'm at in Spokane, this is kind of like the five hundred dollars to $700,000 home range. Those ones are tricky because it's not generally affordable for the people that have a desire to live in those neighborhoods. And, you know, those neighborhoods aren't necessarily desirable to the rich folk, right? They want to live up into the multi-million dollar houses, the ones with land, the ones with all the amenities that those people seek. So if you have starter homes, those will still do well. But those middle ones are probably a little bit tough. Overall, with the United States, we are moving into kind of a funny time in history. And, you know, I was born in the 90s, so I don't remember, you know, back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, when we had a lot of inequality and different things. But for my lifetime, this is a period of time where it really seems like we have a massive gap between kind of the haves and the have-nots in the United States. And the people that have no money, they are able to afford less and less and buy a lot less with their money just because of inflation and different things that have been going on. That's always how it's been, but it's gotten even more out of hand recently. I mean, it is shocking how expensive stuff has got. Like my wife and I went to lunch 
Um, I just got like some pickup sandwiches from a place here in Spokane last week. And it was like $40 for two sandwiches, like two deli sandwiches. I'm like, come on, it's outrageous. Doesn't make any sense, but that's the nature of it. And I'm paying the same price as everyone else. I'm just fortunate that I can afford stuff, right? But there's a ton of people who cannot. To make matters more complicated, there are tons of people that are out there crushing it. There are people that got higher education. They're getting paid a lot of money by companies because there is this employment issue. People are getting high pay raises. There are nurses out there that are crushing it. There's tons of people that are getting into entrepreneurship and doing these different things. And so there's this big gap because there are the people that just haven't figured it out. There are the people that kind of have. And to make it even more complicated, the people that have high salaries and are, you know, bringing in more money on a monthly basis, they also have a much higher rate of interest in different kinds of like financial education and investing and buying rental properties, all that sort of stuff, right? That didn't really exist all that long ago, especially when it comes to real estate. You know, real estate investors, not that long ago, like 90s, early 2000s, they were either like rich people or they were like that quirky uncle who would say inappropriate stuff at the family get together and never seemed to be working during the week. He didn't understand that. And everyone was like, oh, you know, that's uncle brick, whatever. That was the guy that owned rental properties that you learned as you got older. And you're like, oh, he was a landlord. He had passive income. He kind of had it all figured out. Now more and more people are understanding that possibility. So you have the people with money that are going and starting to pursue that so they can also have the wealth generation of financial freedom. The people that are in the have not position, despite not even being able to afford it, they also don't understand how that works, right? This have this huge gap in financial education on top of the actual tangible gap in finances. So as a result, what will happen if prices do start to go down, you have a bunch of these people that are interested in passive income, interested in financial independence, interested in wealth. They see the rates, the um, prices start to go down on the properties. They're going to start buying, right? They're going to see this opportunity that they have been waiting for, where the prices are come down off a high and they will start to squeeze tighter and tighter deals because their drive to have this lifestyle that they dream of is so massive. And so, especially in like that kind of starter home price when I talked about earlier, for the most of the cash flow is going to be on a rental side. If prices start to drop, those investors will be beating out homeowners, especially if they haven't spent, if they have spent the last couple of years saving up money from their, their jobs in the medical field or as engineers or software developers, whatever they're doing, they're going to start buying these assets and it will take more properties off the counter for people that are in that starter home price point, right? That want to be retail homeowners. And what they will do when they buy these properties is they will go to rent them out to those that were unable to buy them. And what this will happen, as this happens, right, they will go and they will buy the houses, they will increase rents to cover their mortgage costs, the renters need somewhere to live, they're going to start to get into, you know, more and more alternative living situations, whether they're getting roommates, whether they're like two families living in the same spot, you know, people renting by the room, whatever they're trying to do. That's what the investor population is going to push towards the renters. The renters are going to have to eat that because that's the position that they're in in life and in the economy. And ultimately, that's going to happen for a while until it eventually reaches a tipping point, right? It will eventually reach a tipping point where even with the rent by the room, the multifamilies in a house, the multiple families in a single um, unit, all this different stuff, it reach a tipping point where even that is no longer affordable. And what happens at that point? I have no idea. That's where stuff's going to get really weird. So there's kind of a couple different things that'll happen. Either rents will stop rising, vacancies will increase, it will be a little bit of a race to the bottom from landlords trying to fill units. And then once they do have them filled, the landlord will come under regular pressure as taxes and insurance continue to increase, which will bring their cash flow even lower. And at that point, things might start to get interesting. Investors could be looking to sell, when their ass turns into a liability because they're no longer able to get the rents that they anticipated, that's one situation. Or if the feds come in and decide to drop rates again and bring monthly uh, payments way down so people can refinance, everyone will refinance their properties, bring their payments way down. And at that point, we will basically be right back where we started. They will hold on to these properties forever, these investors will, and they will not let go of these low interest rate properties. And that will drive prices back up. So either it will force in the fire sale on the investors, or it will force them to refinance depending on what the feds kind of do. And if you really know what they're going to do, it's always kind of a shot in the dark. So that's what I'm kind of seeing on like the retail side between, you know, what investors will do, what the situation is with homeowners competing with investors, all that sort of stuff. 
But one of the big question remains now is if you're an investor or a wholesaler, what exactly should you be doing? And I think a big trend that we are seeing is we're starting to see less opportunities with low income and distressed houses, okay? And this is primarily because the people that live in those houses and are owner occupants, they have nowhere to go. And we're starting to see significantly more opportunity for nicer homes because those are people that need to sell, right? They're people that have a value in the convenience. They maybe try to list properties, hasn't sold, things like that. And they are starting to value the convenience or the need to sell these properties more so than the actual top line price, okay? We're seeing this in our business. We're seeing this in our instant investor program with our students and our mastermind over there. I mean, Dan and I, we just bought this turnkey 2005 property out here in North Idaho. The seller finance, we're buying it 5% down and also getting about 80% of retail value. Needs nothing. Basically, they just needed to sell it. They couldn't sell it on the market. They're selling it to us because we don't mind holding it for a couple of years with terms like that. It's a great property for us. We got another property for a partner, for our partner down in um, central Idaho. Property was listed two months ago for like 675000 We snagged it for 500000 But Okay, the people are looking to move to Wisconsin or somewhere. It had been listed for months. They weren't able to sell it. They got it down to six twenty five dollars on the market. No takers. Okay, we bought it for um, 500000 We're going to pretty much just vacuum. Well, I guess our partner's buying it for 500000 They're going to just vacuum the carpet. Do some handyman, paint up, touch up, whatever. Listed on the market at five ninety nine, which is a much more appropriate price right now. It should go no problem, right? Easy deal. Beautiful house, very simple. Two other people in our instant investor community have literally gotten A-class properties with pools and like nice pools, not like funny scummy ones, but ones that are like kind of have a round shape and they have a water slide and they have a hot tub built in. Like dope houses, they're buying at steep discounts just because the house went on the market, didn't sell for some reason or another, usually price point, use something else. And they're gonna buy these properties, gonna turn them into Airbnbs. They're going to, you know, potentially flip them. One guy's even gonna move into one. We have these awesome properties that are coming through that was unheard of years ago in the sort of off-market community. So starting to see a lot more opportunities with stuff like that and a lot less dealing with crackheads. Like we aren't stuck dealing with crackheads anymore. So to round everything up for the rest of the year and even going forward after that, I think prices are going to kind of stay flat. We're not going to see anything go up. We're not going to see anything go down. Rents will continue to rise, especially because a lot of people are getting fat tax increases with all the new assessments going on in every county. If prices do dip at all, especially if it's significant, investors are ready to jump on the opportunity. There's a ton of us that are accumulating cash right now that are waiting for the next opportunity. Both experienced and inexperienced investors are waiting for their shot to make real money. And so that's what they will do if prices go down. And if you're not marketing to nicer areas, you definitely should be. Like you, again, you don't need to be focusing on crackheads anymore. You can start to expand out market a little bit more to the nicer areas. And even if it doesn't pay off in the immediate, I guarantee as we get to the end of the summer, we get to the fall, we get to the winter, and the market generally starts to slow down anyway, there's going to be a ton of opportunity to pick up some A-class assets without having to pay too much for it. Probably getting on some pretty sweet discounts. So anyways, guys, that is my view on what I think is going to happen with the real estate market for the rest of the year and probably going early in 2024. What do you think? I would love to hear do you think that my opinion is completely wrong? Think I suck? Think I don't know what I'm talking about? Perfect. Let's have a conversation. Hit me up on Instagram at Mike underscore invest. I would love to get your opinions on this whole thing. Think I'm right too. You should let me know because I love to have my ego stroked with all stuff because I do put a lot of time and thought into it. I have been around a while. Sometimes people disagree with my opinions and those are my favorite conversations to have. So you should reach out to me at Mike underscore invest on Instagram. Besides that, guys, please share this with anyone who has any interest in real estate, the economy, business, or I don't know, you think we just vibe well with what Dan and I do. It's the greatest way for us to grow the show. And if anything, you're honestly being selfish by not sharing this because you could have people that start listening to the show. They might learn something that could change their life for the better. So share it with everybody that you know. You never know whose life might change and they could eventually become a real estate wealthy themselves. So anyways, guys, thanks for listening and we'll talk to you all next week. Thanks for listening to this Collecting Keys Friday Focus. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts.